there are many solutions to global warming and climate change, and one of them is actually taking CO2 out of the atmosphere. There's a Canadian company called Carbon Engineering that's uh, developing technology to do just that. In fact, it broke ground today on a, a new innovation center in Squamish, BC. And so we're going to talk to Steve Oldham, who's the CEO of Carbon Engineering, and have him tell us about his technology. So, Steve, welcome to the, uh, to the interview. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, thank you for the interest. Look forward to talking. Well, look, tell us what happened today. I, I gather you've got a new innovation center, and this is going to lead to further development and commercialization of your technology. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, fundamentally, uh, direct air capture is not easy. Um, so CO2 in the atmosphere is 400 parts per million. So that's akin to dropping a single drop of ink into a swimming pool and then pulling it back out again. So the process of doing it is, is challenging. Uh, our company's been going for nine years, and we're very conscious of the fact that we need to keep upgrading, making the technology more optimal uh, as we exploit it worldwide. Um, so in British Columbia, in, in Squamish, we have our long-term innovation center, which we broke ground on today. And that is going to be the place where we do our research and development, where we test our concepts uh, before putting them out into the field. Now, I understand that you had a pilot plant, and how did that work? So the pilot plant was a batch plant, and uh, it's still operating today. We still use it on a regular basis. So our process has four steps. Happy to talk you through them. Um, and in our pilot plant, each of those steps was, was really operated in isolation. So we proved each one, but we didn't prove them continuously. So one of the things in the validation plant will expand the capacity, but we'll also link all those processes together into a continuous 24-7 flow. What's the, uh, the core of the technology, Steve, that actually takes the CO2 out of the air? So for us, it's, it's a combination of two things. So um, and before I describe them, uh, I want to emphasize that the size of the, the challenge. I already mentioned that the 400 parts per million is making things difficult. Then you have the fact that we need just a colossal quantity of carbon removal. So carbon engineering was founded with the intent of providing a industrial scale solution for removing climate, uh, CO2 from the atmosphere. So we have two fundamental principles in our design. The first is that we use existing industrial equipment. Why? Because it's readily available. It's available worldwide. So we take technology and equipment that exists today and then apply a unique process to it. And that way we know our technology can scale to very large sizes. We know it'll last for many years and it, it can be available worldwide. The second principle is that we remake all the chem chemicals as we go along in our process. So as we go from 400 parts per million, the CO2 in the air, through to pure concentrated CO2, at each step as we concentrate the CO2, we remake the chemicals in the previous step. What that does for you is it means your consumable cost is much lower. You don't have an environmental impact from the volume of consumables you need. So with those two statements, fundamentally, we're a chemical process employed across existing industrial equipment. How long uh, would you estimate that it'll be before you'll be able to scale up to full commercial production? So our first plant, um, we actually announced last year that we're underway with the design of our first plant. Um, we're working with Occidental, a uh, US company, and we expect that plant to be in Texas. And it will be a one megaton plant. So one megaton is the work of about 40 million trees, um, all within about 60 acres. So from a concentration perspective, uh, direct air capture provides a solution where we don't require the vast quantities of land area that, for example, forestry uh, requires to, to capture CO2. So does this mean that the equipment would be uh, engineered to work with, say, uh, I, Occidental is an oil and gas company, so it would work with their, their equipment, sort of a bolt-on or re-engineered, and then take the CO2 out at the source? No, think of it as, um, so direct air capture, because you're removing CO2 straight from the atmosphere, air is everywhere. So we can put a plant just about any location. And that's a big advantage because, you know, one of our biggest challenges with CO2 removal is what do we do with the CO2 once we've got it? You have to put it somewhere. So what we do with, with Occidental is we're going to bury it back underground again. You know, our climate change problem has come because we took CO2 from the geosphere underground and put it in the atmosphere. To reverse the process, we need to take it from the atmosphere, put it back underground again. 
but we can put our plants just about anywhere. Yeah, I understand now because, of course, the the rock is uh, in a in a reservoir is can is probably the kind of geology that you need to store that quantity of CO two. So yeah, one of the uh, one of the interesting features about about getting rid of CO two and putting it back underground is the skill sets required to handle CO two, put it back underground, the locations that that can uh, allow that. They're exactly the same as the places where we took things out of the ground in the first place. So places like here in Canada, Alberta and Saskatchewan, big resource economies, we pull things out of the ground, great place to put CO2 back underground again. And that's the relationship we have with Oxy in, in Texas. What do you, will this process be economic at, uh, in the near future? I understand that you make low carbon fuel with the CO2 that you capture. Yeah, so um, here's the way that we look at it. Um, if we're going to get to net zero, which is what the planet recognizes we need to do, there is a significant variation in what is your cost to eliminate a CO2 emission. So some CO2 emissions are really easy. Turn off the lights, turn down your heating. So you stop the emission and you save money, negative cost. Then you start looking at things like replacing um, coal electricity with renewable electricity. That's becoming more affordable as time goes by. But now start to get to the harder emissions, like trucks, like planes, ships. Now start to deal with all the legacy emissions. That's the emissions that are already in the atmosphere. So it's erroneous to think that eliminating a ton of carbon has a single price. It doesn't. It's negative in some cases and thousands of dollars in others. So what does Direct Air Capture do? It gives you a way to eliminate any emission of any type from any place in any time at a fixed price. So of course you wouldn't employ direct air capture and say to you, turn up your thermostat. That makes no economic sense. Does it make sense to do direct air capture instead of trying to develop an electric plane? Yes, it does. It's way cheaper. How much of the legacy atmosphere do you think uh, could be captured with your technology? Well, start with the problem first. So. Broadly speaking, we need to eliminate 800 gigatons of historical CO2 that we've already put in the atmosphere. So even if we get to net zero and stop emitting as a planet, we have to think about yesterday's emissions, 800 gigatons. So how are we going to do that? In my mind, a combination of uh, forestry, um, which you know, trees obviously consume CO2, but it's not permanent. A tree eventually dies. Regrettably, they burn down. They can be chopped down. So I think we're going to have to address the 800 gigatons using technologies like direct air capture and in combination with trees. Um, advantage of direct air capture, there really is no limit. It's not a, it's not a limited technology. There's, unlike, for example, flu stack capture, there's only so many flu stacks uh, that you can capture CO2 from. With direct air capture, you can build as many plants as you need to. This will be my last question, Steve. Uh, do you have a timeline for achieving full commercialization of your technology? Yeah, um, I mean, full commercialization, it's a constantly iterating process. You know, the Innovation Center we broke down on today is designed to continuously improve our technology. Our first plant will go operational, we think 2024, uh, first one megaton plant. Um, we're currently looking at licensing deals, both here in Canada and in the United States to build many plants in parallel. Uh, but we'll keep updating our technology continuously. Ultimately, we want this technology to be available across the planet at the lowest possible price because our mission as a company is to develop a tool that can make a material impact in climate change. Steve, thank you very much for this fascinating story and I uh, look forward to chatting with you in the future as we check in and, and uh, all, all the best and good luck on, with your company. Thank you very much.